White out to Marvin Bagley, the third for three. Good read by Cade Cunningham. Blast getting a second opportunity, reversing the basketball, creating a one-on-one -on -one opportunity for Kusuma. Oh, mercy! Zero tenths of a second. Yeah. had one the first game. Cunningham to step back three. Pistons needed that one. White by Asar Thompson. Pistons are cooking. Thompson. Oh, mercy! Come on! Oh, damn, the video started. I'm sorry, I was basking in the sunlight. I apologize to all of you who were expecting me to have this video up much sooner. I did try my damnness hours trying to get this video up, but for some reason, YouTube wanted to copyright this. Imagine a Detroit Pistons game getting hit with multiple copyright claims. It got to the point I said, I don't care if it's monetized, I just need to get this out there. Then it blocked it in the Western Hemisphere. And I said, you know you know what, I, I don't get it. I don't understand it. YouTube, YouTube doesn't want me to be great. They want you broke, they want you miserable, they want you unhappy, but I won't let them. Also happy 19K day. We're in the neighborhood stretch to 20K. Tell your friends, tell your family, Tell your pet hamster to subscribe. So if you guys ever wonder why a video didn't upload when you thought it would, or I've gone dark and disappeared, 95% of the time it's YouTube related. So now let's get into the very thing that you came here for, the Pistons. We had to play against the Heat for our first game. Our first two games were away games. And even though we lost to the Heat, we did such a great job throughout the game and staying in it against Hemi Butler the only thing that did us in were turnovers. The turnovers were just crippling in every sense of the word. You can't win a basketball game turning the ball over as many times as we did. But I know those are growing pains. We did better taking care of the ball against Charlotte as well as against the Bulls last night. And can we talk about P.J. Washington acting the hell up right here? What is this? What in the 80s basketball? Who do you think you are? He thought Isaiah Stewart was Brittany Renner. The announcers were talking, so, oh, he was frustrated all night. Well, you mad because you didn't pull out? Don't get angry at us. As a matter of fact, change your name while you're at it. Anybody named Washington couldn't act this undemocratic. Jalen Duran's like, what, what's going gotten into him? What's wrong with guy? That's that 18 year contract anger. Ain't got nothing to do with us. You need to keep yours to yourself. Anyway, let me get back to formula. Let me congratulate Zach Levine for an amazing and tremendous display of basketball last night. He just couldn't miss. He came out the gate swinging. He was on fire the second the ball touched his hands, and he ended the game with 51 points, which apparently tied Kevin Durant for the most done in our arena. When they put this up on the TV, I was shaking my damn head because I was like, look at the, the main big three of the Brooklyn failed Nets absolutely torched us so many different times at home. Then another statistic was shown that made me feel so much better because Mr. Jalen Duran over here now passes LeBron James on the list of teenagers to achieve a double-double. The majority of the NBA world doesn't yet know who Jalen Duran is. They haven't become familiar with him, but you soon will. He's definitely going to be an all-star sooner rather than later and he's only 19, he turns 20 in November. I believe he has tremendous upside, as well as in recent games, we've been seeing him run the offense. He's been a facilitator, which many didn't expect that to really be in his game. I saw him do it a few times last season, but he's become so used to it now, he's developed an affinity for it somewhat. He has multiple assists now per game. And he's able to achieve the double doubles that he's achieving while being efficient with no plays being drawn up for him. He's where he needs to be at all times. He's even gotten a co-sign from Paul George himself. Dude is a sleeper. Y'all probably don't even know who this, this kid is. Jalen Duran. Jalen In Dur Detroit, Durant. big man. Like his game. And I see what I think he will be in the league. I see him as like a baby Dwight Howard. But he's like built like a grown Man, God damn, this dude's strong as <laughs> <shit>. <laughs> And it me up 
Because he's only 19. 19? Yeah. Bro, I could not move him. I'm like boxing him out. Next thing I know, he in front of me. He didn't swim move me out the way. I remember going to the bench like, yo, this little dude's strong. <laughs> Detroit is also leading the NBA now in blocked shots as a team, which is just, it's just so great to hear. Because the identity that Detroit has always had since its glory days with the bad boy Pistons has been that of defense. And what Monty Williams is trying to establish here is a culture. We don't exactly know what it is fully yet, but defense will be at the top of that list. And if we could somehow mimic any of that in the past or the going to work Pistons in the mid 2000s and apply that to some awesome offense, as well as great ball movement because there's amazing ball movement there we have the ability to really do something special and now i also hear there's a lot of complaints among the detroit faithful about how monty williams has been handling jade and ivy because jade and ivy is coming off the bench now and there are people thinking that this is going to be another deandre ayton situation no it's not Jaden and Ivy was basically allowed to do whatever the hell he wanted last year because Cade was out. There were multiple Pistons who were out with injury and we were just pretty much tanking. So you learn through experience. They just threw him into the pool and say swim. They threw him in the deep end. So he developed some bad habits here and there, but he also became a far better facilitator. He became a better person in being able to be offensively inclined. The game slowed down a bit for him more. But Monty Williams is treating it as a, in order to curb some of these bad habits, you're going to have to come off the bench, apply yourself, put the work in, and you get more minutes that way. And Jaden Ivey also defensively, I guess they say he's somewhat inferior to Killian Hayes, which to me was kind of surprising because Killian Hayes is, a lot of people been kind of just indifferent towards him but one of the main reasons why we were even able to get back into the game against the Miami Heat was due to Killian Hayes's defense and Jaden Ivey has been a huge factor coming off the bench running the second unit because he's learned a lot of different things that came from last year having to be thrown into the fire work under duress with not too many other people on the floor who can put up shots and do something offensively I don't see a problem with Monty Williams is doing. He's teaching discipline and Jaden Ivey has a tremendous work ethic and he doesn't seem to have a problem with it either. And when you look at, of course, Cade, we can't not talk about Cade. Cade being here fully, he's had some turnovers and things, but that comes with being point guard. The point guard has the ball in their hands the most. So they more often than not accumulate the most turnovers. But despite that, He's had so many different assists. He had 10 assists last night against the Bulls. His outside shot has gotten so much better. He seems far more comfortable pulling up from three. He's been getting to the line more despite still not getting really many calls. In general, Detroit just doesn't get calls. We don't get shit, to be honest with you. Our own refs were ops for us last night. There were a string of egregious calls or questionable calls perpetrated onto us by the refs and it took us out of the game damn near it allowed the bulls to go on a run the crowd was over here saying referee sucks and is it was ridiculous I was like what now every time the whistle blew I, a chill came up my spine I was like, okay what do we do this time and of course it was always on us and Cade was clapping trying to get everybody back into the game he said all right come on come on let's go don't let that get us down and for him to be a leader on the court and in the locker room, he was on court side through so many different games last year. He wants to be here. He's put in so much work to curb the injury prone allegations, which I don't believe he is. He had one main injury regarding his shin that he had to get surgery for, which is the reason why he even missed majority of all of last season. And he did land on his foot wrong against the Bulls, but he played through it and said, no, 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 I'm fine. He refused to be taken out. That is Mamba mentality. Somebody who was injury prone and soft wouldn't go back out there, especially when they were winning. They were still winning. Detroit was in control of most of the game that entire night. And then we've got a sore Thompson. A sore Thompson is exactly what we needed as well. Somebody who's a great wing, amazing defense. He may not put up amazing numbers offensively, which I think will change, but he played so great in so many different 
individual plays, being able to just poke the ball here and there, set teammates up. He himself is a facilitator. He's been a dog on the defensive end, and he's been able to hit open shots whenever somebody dishes it to him. There's so many great things to be excited for here in Detroit. So when you look at Jalen Duran, who I wouldn't be surprised, like, I, I mean, he could be an all-star this year. Maybe. I don't know. But if not this year, next year for sure. If you look at that, you look at Cade, you look at Jaden Ivey coming off the bench, I'm sure he'll be back in the starting lineup sooner rather than later himself. And you've got Marcus Sasser, great energy and explosiveness, can knock down shots. Beef Stew over here and Isaiah Stewart, the guy that fought LeBron because that's the average person an NBA fan even knows about him. His shot has improved tremendously from the outside. And there were people over here saying they should trade him. Never. He's been an engine for this team. He's a glue guy. You don't get rid of glue guys so willy nilly. You just don't do that. You've got Alec Burks over here hitting shots left and right. He had six, seven different threes last night, I believe. Amazing, amazing coaching from Monty Williams. I definitely see the ch it's a night and day difference between this team this year and last year. I know it's only a few games into the season, of course. Monty Williams has stressed that himself, but the identity is already starting to unfold. This is a completely different team. We've already won more games now because we're two and one than damn near last year. I can't remember what it was, but it was looking pretty abysmal by the second or third game, even though we won the first game last year. I'm just so excited. I'm so proud of this team. I'm proud of the direction that it's going in. And I'm deeply appreciative of being able to bear witness to some great basketball taking place here in my own city. It's been a damn minute. It's been too long. So that's all I wanted to say so far. I'm going to try to make sure I can get rid of these damn copyright things and try to get a video out on Detroit as much as I can. And I want to thank you so much for making it this far. What do you think about the Pistons? Do you think I'm a little bit biased just because I'm a native here, of course? Do you see what I see? And what do you think will be their ending tally or their placement? in the season you think this is a play-in team this year or maybe next year like comment subscribe if you're new and i shall see you on the next one